Hi, everyone. This is Chad Hill, and I also have Adam Stetzer on the phone. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. Yeah, and today we're here to talk about our web grader. So I know many of you are new to uh, – this is one of the first webinars you've attended that uh, we put on. So I thought it would be good to take a minute and just introduce HubShout, and then we can jump right into the web grader. So HubShout, uh, what we do is we work with lots of uh, smaller SEO firms and also uh, – well, for that matter – SEO firms in general, and then also web design firms, um, and we provide software and services to help implement and execute online marketing programs. And uh, one of the things that uh, we built that we'll talk about right now is our web grader tool uh, that really what we um, built this for was to help our clients educate their potential customers and prospects around uh, the benefits of, of, of building links to your website and how building links actually is one of the more important ways to gain domain authority, which ultimately leads to the rankings they want. So I'll jump right in and start talking about that. On our screen, on our website, you can click the Web Grader tool on the right-hand side here of the, uh, on the home page. And uh, we start off with the ability to simply enter a domain name. Now, I've decided today that I'm going to analyze and pretend that we had a company coming to us that provided law firm websites, and they were great at designing websites but didn't really know much about SEO, and so they're coming to you or to us or someone to understand what they can do to understand how they benchmark against their competitors. So I just did a simple Google search on law firm websites, and I uh, picked the number 10 listing here, oops. Uh, the number 10 uh, listing, which was um, chard.net. And I entered that into our web grader and came to our, uh, our, our first screen here where we show at the top of the screen the value of the organic traffic for chard.net. And what this is, is the way we calculate the organic value of chard.net's um, uh, traffic is we take their search rankings and we look at the, all the keywords that they rank on. We take that ranking and we divide it by the estimated number of monthly searches. So that gives us sort of a rough proxy for the number of, of visitors that they might have on any given keyword. And then we take that and we multiply it by the estimated cost per click that we pull back from the AdWords, from Google AdWords, to, to get a sense of what the value would be if you had to pay for that click. And so in doing that, we calculate that char.net's traffic is worth roughly $11,602 a month. Now, if we wanted to dig in that a little bit more and see kind of what rankings they have, you can see on the left-hand side of our web grader, we show you where their what their top rankings are and then you can dig into a little bit more analysis here by clicking the see the full keyword analysis list so now this is a, a, a longer table that shows you all the keywords with the monthly the estimated number of monthly searches on that keyword the cost per click for that keyword and then the current ranking for char.net. So I'm just going to sort this by uh, from sort of high to low just to get a sense of the, the big keywords and which ones aren't, uh, or the big keywords and, and the other ones. So it looks like law firm web design and char dot, chart itself has 9,900 searches. That's probably an anomaly here, but we'll take a look at the second keyword, which is law firm web design, which has 880 monthly searches. They're in position 10, and the average cost per click for that keyword is $13.61. So in order to calculate the value of their traffic, we would take that 880, we divide it by 10, so we get 88, and we multiply that by $13.61. And the reason we divide it by 10 is we roughly are trying to say that the higher you are up on a term, obviously, the, the higher your click-through rate would be. So if there was a term that had 880 searches and you were in position one for the purposes of calculating our value of, of your traffic, we're just going to divide that by one, which would give you credit for all 880 searches, and then multiplying it by the $13.61. So 
as you obviously move down the rankings, you're going to get a lower and lower share of those total searches to the point where you get obviously very little value um, if you're on page two or three or four. So what we do is we take that same process and then we add up all of the rankings and come up with your estimated total monthly value of your traffic to your website. And Chad, there's a question on this that's popping in in our chat window here, if you've got a second. And it is, uh, how can I edit that list you're showing us of the keywords dynamically? I was playing around with this yesterday, and I noticed for one client that it was missing uh, not just some of the important keywords, but some of their higher ranking keywords. That's a great suggestion. You currently can't do that. I could see in this particular case where maybe you would want to say, well, chart is not really a very useful part of the analysis, so we could pull it out. And that's something that uh, we'll definitely take a note of. Um, and, and I suppose you're saying there's also the opposite is true, where there are cases where you want to add a keyword that may not be showing. Um, and, you know, the data here is, is basically being uh, pulled back so that where we're able to extract what the rankings are. But as you can probably imagine, um, there are times where it might miss a ranking or two, and, and that probably would be useful to add in. So we can't do that today, but that's a good suggestion that we can take back and, and think about. Right. And also, there's going to be a lag with the data sources that we subscribe to to get some of this. So that's going to be a, uh, another point of where it's not going to be 100% accurate. Um, the second one that came in, Chad, that's a fun one. Your divide by numbers don't correlate with what we really know about organic click-through rate by position. Can you talk a little bit more about why you're using your methodology? Yeah, I think that that's a great one. And we, we talked a bit about that um, you know, sort of early on, and uh, the numbers that, you know, we, we do know that the click-through rate, uh, that it's essentially a winner-take-all proposition where the guy in position one is going to get, you know, exponentially larger, uh, bigger click-through rate than the guy in two, three, and four, and five. And so, you know, while we see those numbers changing, what we wanted to do was uh, see those numbers, you know, different studies show slightly different click-through rates. I mean, we've seen some that say that position one gets 60 or 70 percent, other ones say position one gets 40 percent uh, click-through rate, and then, you know, it's a very quick drop-off as you move down the page to the point where the guy at the bottom of page one in position 10 um, is, you know, lucky to be getting a, a one or two percent click-through rate, if that. So, you know, we've seen a lot of different studies for just simplicity and trying to sort of um, really give sort of extra credit for the guy who is in position one. We simplified it and just divided by their, their rank. So it may not be, you know, absolutely correct, but also some of the things here that we sort of said we're not capturing are longer tail keywords. So the guy who ranks number one on law firm web design probably also is getting traffic from you know, slightly longer ter term tail keywords that aren't going to get picked up um, in the way that, that we're pulling back ser uh, search engine rankings. So we sort of said, you know, the two might bounce out and we're, we're comfortable using this. And really, again, it's the most important thing is the next step when we start comparing uh, one website's rankings to another set website's rankings. Yeah, I think that's well put. In fact, I was just reviewing these numbers, Chad, on um, my post on Search Engine Watch uh, last week. I cross-linked um, to a pretty well-respected post that had these numbers, and it was it was 38% in this study to position one, and then it dropped to 12 for position two. So there's no doubt that the person who commented uh, into the chat window uh, listening is correct, that we're not using these numbers uh, in the truest sense, but need to reflect on what Chad said about the long tail, because we actually did try doing the calculation using the real statistically based numbers. And what we felt was it underrepresented the long tail, as Chad said. So a guy who makes it to position 10 on a big term, like the one we're looking at here, he is going to pick up long tail traffic that some of these data services we use for this data don't pick up. So this was our attempt to normalize that and really represent reality and, and compensate for some of the data we know is not in there. I'm going to flip back, flip back to the, uh, the main research tab here and, and continue on looking just at this one website. And then, as I said before, getting into the comparisons is also really important. The other thing we do is we pull back which pages are actually ranking on particular terms. So in this particular case, this website, 65 of the keyword rankings it has are for their homepage. They do have some other 
blog and it looks like uh, uh, portfolio pages on their website that are ranking. So you can click see details to actually get a, a layout of or get a, a to see which keywords are ranking for which page. So here you go. We can and it's sorted right now by searches. So you can see for their you know big head term law firm web design that that is actually the home page ranking on it. But then lawyer websites is actually their portfolio site. Let's go back to the research tab. I'll continue to scroll down. So the next section of the web grader, uh, what we're doing here is showing where the the root domains linking for chart.net compared to all their websites that we have run through our web grader. And uh, we have a we have a couple hundred thousand and we're working our way towards um, a million uh, websites that we've run through and collected these kinds of stats. But you can see that what you're seeing on this particular graph is the distribution of of root links to a website across all the ones that we've again um, run through our web grader. And uh, before I get any further in that, I should probably talk about what a root link is. So I'm just going to point down to this section, the next table, and explain the difference between links and root to root links. So a root to root link is any link going from one domain to another. So if you had a link from domain X to domain Y.com, that's one root link. If on domain X there happened to be you had a footer link or you had actually 10 blog posts on that particular site, so technically there are 10 pieces of unique content on that domain linking over to, um, to the second domain, that's going to count as 10 links but only one root to root link. And so one of the things that, that you know, people, again, when we talk to, um, to our resellers and partners and, and their clients, uh, one of the things that people get too focused on are, hey, is it, I should go spend a lot of time posting in this one form because it's very powerful for my particular keyword or, or my category. And from, uh, certainly from an audience standpoint, being present in a, in a forum could potentially help drive referral traffic to your website and sort of the truest sense of would it be better to spend time getting links from lots of different websites or spending a lot of time at one place getting links? We definitely recommend, and we think this holds true as we look at rankings, that it's more important to have a diverse set of root to root links. So getting 10 more links on one website isn't as good as going and getting 10 more links on 10 different websites. So uh, what we're showing on this particular chart above is that distribution of websites with, with how they fall with root to root links. So what this is showing is that um, there are most, it appears most websites that we've run through our web grader have somewhere around 25 root to root links, right? So it's actually, you know, the, the bulk of them, you can see that it really starts falling off once you get into the 60 or 70 range. So most websites are clustered over here to the left. Now char.net actually is above sort of the, you know, is, is outside of the, of the cluster there um, because obviously they're, they're doing some SEO because they're ranked on a very competitive keyword on the first page. So you can see here they actually have 52 root to root links and 427 total links. The other two stats that we show are domain authority and MozRank. So their domain authority is a 27 and this is a this is a, a value between zero and one hundred, and their Moz rank is five, which roughly equates is a zero to ten ranking. And so again, domain authority is a number that helps us understand the a website's. And this is from SEO Moz, but it helps understand how well the chances that a website can rank, or a website's chance of ranking on on keywords. So the higher your domain authority, the better. And you know as SEO Moz says that this is sort of their metric that brings together a lot of the other values and numbers that they're putting together to say, hey, if you wanted to sum it up and say, what's your website's chance of ranking, look at something like domain authority, and the higher the better between 0 and 100. Okay, so what I want to do now is, as I said before, really the interesting thing comes into play when you 
bring when you add competitors in. So I've taken the char.net and I've pre prepared, I added two other competitors who are higher up on the search results page for the term um, law firm websites. So I actually took the top guy, law promo, and um, I took uh, law firm sites who was sort of middle of the pack, um, you know, about seven or so on the on the search results page. So this is interesting. Now we see that you know char.net has an organic estimated organic uh, value of a, of eleven thousand six hundred two, but lawfirmsites.com and lawpromo.com have you know in one case double and in another case almost ten times the the organic uh, traffic value. So what's really cool is when you take a look at go back to your top organic keyword rankings um, module here and click through and look at the full keyword analysis. So what this lets us do is actually see kind of head to head where are you ahead and where are the competitors ahead. Uh, and so you know what I can do is I'll just sort on on the the uh, competitor two, which is Law Promo. They're the ones who have the high rankings. Sort down a little bit here, and we'll just kind of see where they're ahead and where um, where they're not. Actually, let's see here. Actually, actually, yeah, that's right. So Law Firm Web Design, you can see that the um, chart was in position ten. That um, Law Firm Sites was four, and Law Promo was one. And you can actually kind of look at each of these rankings. So this is really good because it gives you a sense of where, what keywords are your competitors ranking on, um, and then getting a sense of how you stack up against them on each of these, these keywords. So this is great for keyword research, and a lot of times, again, when we're, if, if, if uh, char.net came to us and said, hey, we really want to figure out what our competitors are doing, this is a great place to say, well, here's how they're getting these, these here's how they're getting sort of the, the, the higher value of their organic traffic because they are ranking on more keywords and their position is better on those. So as we were trying to figure out which keywords you might want to target, this would be a good place to start. Now, obviously these keywords are extremely competitive so we'd have to also understand what's budget like and what's time frame like in order to figure out, you know, is there an opportunity on some of these, these bigger head terms or do we need to be looking further down and, and the less competitive words that, that might, they might be able to rank on in a, a shorter period of time. So I'm just going to scroll down a bit here. And what this is indicating is any place where there's a red X, that's a keyword where the first domain you enter, char.net, is, is ranking below the other ones. Now, here's one where clearly these guys have actually gone, um, I, well, this is interesting. They must, have, they must be targeting the keyword kind of modern law website design, but they're actually ranking on modern law office designs. And, uh, and so, you know, they, they're ranking in position three. Again, not a very, there's not much search volume on that keyword, but uh, that's, that, that's an example of where they're ahead of the other guys. Okay, I'm going to go back in to the main screen here. Why you do that, Chad? One question that did pop up is: Are those search volumes you just referenced? Are those exact match, broad match, phrase match? What are those? Those are exact match, monthly exact match. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down and we'll take a look again at some of these domain stats. So uh, now we've added in law firm sites and lawpromo.com, uh, and you can see here that. Um, uh, there's some interesting stats here. It looks like law, like for example, lawpromo.com we saw was actually position one on that particular phrase. They have um, a fewer root to root domains, but have a lot more links. Now it's also possible that you know what we're not showing here is the the quality of each of the domains that link, right? So you could take each each of the 284 domains they rank on. Each one of those has its own domain authority. So you know technically, if you were to go in and look at that. It could be that lawpromo.com has just gotten itself on 284 better websites than lawfirmsites.com. But in either case, the guys at the top of the page have far more root-to-root -root domains. And that's one of the points that, if, again, char.net was coming to us saying, how do I compete with these guys further up the page? We'd say, look, you, you need to start building more 
a more diverse set of links to your website for more root domains because that's where, at least in this case, two of these guys are, are you know, beating you out. So start building more links, finding more places to link to you and, uh, and, and follow that, that approach. So that is that takes you through the basics of of the web grader. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention about is is now talk about how we actually use it and how our our partners use it to help you know either do do uh, will help their their clients understand the value of link building uh, and understand how and just really kind of setting up that competitive environment so that a client gets a better understanding of how they actually stand how they compare to their competitors because I'll tell you our experience so far is that when a company sees how much the value of a competitor's organic traffic it really does make them say we need to do something about this and I think you know as website designers and SEO companies that really often is one of the harder things to do is to say why should I care about SEO what's the big deal here and when you see that well your competitors have a big advantage over you because here they're organically getting over $113,000 a month in traffic uh, from the search engines. Clearly, that's a you know that's that's 1.2 million dollars in extra marketing spend they're getting that you're not, and so um, you know that helps really establish the the reason for SEO. And then from there, looking at some of the backlink profiles and the domain authority is a great way of getting into. Well, why is it not just changing the title tag on my website? Why do I need to do other things? So getting into sort of the correlation between domain authority and backlinks to your website really takes you into this is more than just adjusting the title tag on my homepage. There's actually a marketing campaign or an SEO campaign that needs to be happening on this particular keyword. So that's how we're using it. And again, I just want to walk quickly through what we would do. So step one would be client comes to us and says, Hey, I have. Um, I would like to rank on this keyword. This is my my current URL. We can plug that in. Go to Google, search on the keyword they're interested in, find a couple higher ranking competitors, and plug them into the to the the web grader here. Run this analysis. I'm, I can't tell you that it's always going to line up perfectly because there's always anomalies. Like I said, you know, someone could have had. 200 of the best root to root domains in the world against someone who had 500 that were a little bit not quite as good and the guy with 200 could be ranking higher but generally speaking um, what we see is that the ones who have the higher number of root to root links tend to be ranking better have a more uh, have a higher domain authority and typically have a higher score from an organic traffic value so plug these in run this report now what a lot of people are doing is they're actually taking this report and you can share it here. So you can take this URL and you can then send it to your uh, client or screenshot this and then include this in, in reports and information that you're, when you start talking to, to your client. So that's how a lot of people are using it today with the feedback we're getting from, again, our use of it and our resellers use. Um, and we encourage you know all of you on the phone to to uh, to use it as well. One other point to make is that for our resellers who actually are have have signed up for our reseller program, we actually can private label our entire software, so the tracking side of it, as well as the research tab and the web grader, so that it's something that you know rather than having to have your client come to the website um, and see a HubShot logo, they can actually see your logo and see. Um, you know the, the report data right here so it you know it's it's another it's a tool that we've built to allow our reseller community to be better at establishing the business case for SEO uh, and giving them some visual way of doing that on those first couple meetings with potential clients Chad uh, you mentioned this just a few minutes ago but someone popped in the chat window and said what about on-site SEO grading yeah, great point. And there's a host of other web graders out there that do you know a good job with with um, on-site grading. And so, actually, if you kind of read our our piece on uh, on the site where we have, you plug in your URL here, if you check this out, there's a good good post here. And then we also have a couple blog posts that we wrote on the website 
But when we came to this, we said, what can we add to web graders that doesn't already exist? And we said, there's a lot of guys who have focused on, on the on-site side of things, and so we're going to focus on off-site. And so that's really what we've done, is, is really focused on, on domain authority, rankings, the value of the traffic, and then looking at profiling and understanding how the backlinks correlate with better rankings and better value of traffic. Cool. And then another uh, question here for you, Chad. This one is, has Hubshow correlated the data you're providing here against actual analytics from a client account? That's a good question. I, I think that generally speaking, um, we have uh, uh, spot tested that. It's not going to be ever 100% accurate because we are getting just sort of a, a, a sample of the, of the data. But it's really more the methodology and the comparison um, that I think is important. And I'd say that uh, Adam, I, I don't know if we've, I, I don't know if we've really looked at, you know, calculating our margin of error off of you know ten or twenty accounts. But again, it's it, the methodology of how we're using this and and uh, getting a click through rate that we believe is is you know reasonably accurate. Um, and then comparing it is really the, the most important thing because I wouldn't say that, hey, look, you know, go to chart.net and say, we're certain, we're 90% certain that your traffic is worth $11,000 a month. What we can tell you, chart.net, is that you are, you have half the value of uh, law firm sites and a tenth of the value of lawpromo.com. I think that's really the more important comparison to make than calculating any one value. And it's no different Honestly, if, if for those people who have used Compete.com or Alexa or any of the other tools out there, in most cases, the, the value of that data is not in, um, in one point. It's typically comparing sort of you to other people in your, in your peer group. I think that, and I think we also have done individual uh, studies for specific clients, particularly our bigger ones who've challenged us over the years to defend uh, the value of their money. And we've seen in a time series analysis, when you stop building links and your link velocity starts dropping and your rankings start dropping, you start building them again, it picks up. Um, so I think we have done pieces of this, but it's an interesting idea to do something more comprehensive, although I think you'd be really reinventing the wheel that some of the big research-oriented shops are doing and have really nailed. Um, and if you follow the, you know, the SEO blogs and rags, you know they've nailed it pretty well. Our mission is really to take those sort of pie-in-the-sky academic approaches uh, and translate that into real-world practical tools that small businesses can understand and those selling to small businesses can utilize without extensive statistical training. Uh, and that's really where we see we add a lot of value to this conversation by trying to downshift a bit from those very academic discussions, uh, regression analysis and whatnot, to, hey, look, here's your competitor, and here's a reasonable estimation of what their traffic's worth against yours. You don't believe me? Here, let's look at it ranking by ranking. And we find that that very simple, uh, practically oriented conversation is a great closer, and you can really get through some doors of those small business owners with it. Yeah, I'll add one thing to that. I mean, we do on the on sort of the side of running an SEO campaign, one of the things we focus on is the the amount of non-branded organic traffic that we that we drive to a client's website, and and in particular the the growth of that. And in terms of the methodology, again, it's you know the methodology of looking at the value of that traffic. We will often, when sort of justifying and, and talking about the return or on on investment for an SEO campaign, say that you know this traffic you were paying for an AdWords that you're now getting through organic sources. So if you take that traffic and you multiply it by what you were paying or still are paying in some cases for the paid search traffic, you know, that is the, the actual value in, in sort of our mind of that of that traffic, you know, because it's it's real traffic that you would otherwise have to pay for. So, you know, the the part of actually taking the the cost per click times the traffic is you know something we use uh, very often, and then in this particular case, what we're trying to do is because we don't actually have your analytics data, we're trying to use some some proxies for understanding what the expected amount of traffic might be from any given keyword. Great. Well, 
I want to thank everyone for attending the webinar today. And uh, again, I know many of you are new to, and I, and I think this is a lot, we had a lot of great questions. Many of you are new to HubShout, and uh, we appreciate you spending some uh, spending time with us today. If you have any interest in learning more about uh, our software or our services, please feel free to fill out our contact form on the website, and we'll have one of our account managers uh, would be able to do a more in-depth demo of the entire platform and, uh, and also some of the services that we can provide. So thank you very much for your time, and have a great day. Yeah, I hope to get, see you again soon. Take care.